Hello. Now, I did a thing the other day about a cartoon, and I think I'm doing another one now. And this is about a cartoon that appeared a while ago uh, and was drawn by Martin Rosen for the Guardian newspaper. It caused a lot of fuss at the time, and I think it still causes fuss. And the other day, Martin Rosen wrote a, a piece for the Guardian in which he explained again his reasoning for doing this and uh, he effectively apologizes again and he says that um, uh, what I do in my work is a twisted and dreadful magic and it needs to be practiced with extreme care. Over the past few weeks uh, clambering through the wreckage resulting from my last cartoon I've been uh, talking to lots of people prominent and otherwise and um, I've been talking to the Jewish community both to atone and to help with understanding how uh, this um, this sort of thing can happen. Uh, I mean, you know, he's not really saying anything new here that he didn't already say in the past. I thank all of them enormously for the generosity of their time, and let's be frank, their forgiveness. And they've helped me to learn bit by bit, and ahead of my return to these pages in September, to remember what I already knew. The business of satire has never been to give indiscriminate offence, nor is it my job. Its price, therefore, must always be eternal vigilance. Satire is there, um, he says, for uh, two reasons. Um, I, I would agree with him in the first one. That it's to puncture pomposity. I would also agree with him in his second one that it's just reminding the great of their mortality. Maybe that explains the huge amount of ordure in this picture, but that is not a good image. It's not a good image. Uh, he says that he drew up certain rules, three rules, never to attack anyone less powerful, don't punch down, and uh, never attack um, people for what they are, their gender, their ethnicity, um, or their sexuality, only for what they think and do. And if I offend anyone indiscrimin uh, in incidentally, he says, th uh, that he hasn't targeted, then he should apologise. Now, the, the cartoon of Richard Sharp has drawn significant comment, uh, initially by uh, Dr. Dave Rich. Uh, and I, I, I spoke on the, um, I, I think, on Turkish news about this. Um, and I think, as, as did many others, it's brimming with anti-Semitic tropes. Uh, Martin, Mosen, Martin Rosen apologised. But look at these tropes here. The, the filth, the money, the pig in the background, which eating, I don't know what he's eating. Um, the Fagin type of representation of Richard Sharp, uh, the squid. Now, the squid goes back to a 19th century artist called uh, Coin Harvey, uh, the squid or the octopus. Why is it there? Uh, Martin Rosen said it was all about the employee getting his box of stuff and being marched out of the door. But what effectively he's done um, is a is a sort of uh, is it, is it, is it a raw satch that 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 thing where you where you do a blob and you and you close the paper and then you open it up and you say what does the blob represent? Well, the blob represents your inner demons, uh, and I'm afraid this is a blob which betrays uh, inner demons and. He talks about the banality of evil, the everyday evil that lurks in everyday things and triggers um, all, all, all manner of memories and fears, um, and that we must proceed, therefore, with extreme care. We must have eternal vigilance. But we can't do our work if we have eternal vigilance. Uh, the whole point about uh, satire and about cartooning is that it is going to cause offence. Um, and you can't have a bland satire. Even Disney is not bland. If you look at things like uh, The Little Pigs, Disney is filled with its own anti-Semitic tropes. And it goes on. Um, Fantasia. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much you censor these things afterwards, the offence is still there. Uh, even if people are trying very hard. Well, partly because people are trying very hard not to give offence. So instead of thinking in the positive, they're thinking in the negative. I mustn't say this, I mustn't say this, and then, and then of course, they jolly well go and do exactly that. 
Um, what he talks about is a car crash experience, uh, uh, or he's, he says an accident, a, a chaos. What I think he's talking about is a loss of agency. And the people who should have been there to support him simply weren't. They simply said, take time off. Catherine Wiener, she should have called out and said, no, don't print this. But she, she, she's the person who should take responsibility. As far as I know, she's still in her job. Why? It was Martin Rosen who, who, who takes time off. Surely it should have been Catherine Wiener. Um, and, uh, and, and this, this uh, cartoon itself made um, the uh, <laughs> uh, made, made this man in the BBC uh, rich. It, it made him into a victim. It made us feel sorry for him. And we shouldn't have been because, you know, he was um, a buddy of, uh, of of Johnson and he was reveling in the Johnson toxicity. So I think it's a I think it's an important cartoon and will go down in history as one of the great uh, debating points in the history of cartoons. And Martin Rosen is back in the office, I believe. Uh, shortly, uh, so in a, in a couple of weeks' time, he'll be back, churning out his pictures, and I hope they're I, I hope they're thought provoking. Um, but uh, but I, do, I don't think the Guardian has learned its lesson, and it's the same lesson that I'm afraid Nigel Farage failed to learn. That is that racism uh, is a banal and uh, a, a an ephemeral thing, and uh, it's something people can slip into by accident or by humour. And it doesn't that 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 isn't an excuse for it because even in its most banal, even if it's even in its most slight and unintentional uh, form, it is utterly utterly abusive and foul, and it betrays a dehumanizing of our friends, our neighbors, other people. And that is the fundamental problem. So we can say, oh, I didn't intend this to be offensive. Well, it doesn't matter what your intention is. You, you are not the person who is offended. You are the person who has committed the offense. Your intention is irrelevant. And that is the same issue with David Coburn with Nigel Farage, oh, it's just a joke. Can't you take a joke? It's the same issue, incidentally, that Nigel Farage himself experienced uh, on Radio 4 when um, the Radio 4 interviewer said, well, I'm just teasing you. And Nigel Farage took offence. Well, if Nigel Farage can take offence about that, why can't he realise that other people can take offence? I mean, he's only sensitive, like, like so many people, sensitive about things which hurt him. Uh, and uh, this cartoon, to get back to the real subject, the cartoon um, is important, and it's about it's about what is not intended. It's about what was what was done unintentionally. And if we can't control what is unintentional, what what is unintentional sort of reveals the. The id, the, uh, the the deeper the deeper part of us, which we're trying to hide. Well, if that deeper part of us is so foul and so riddled with racism and anti-Semitism, maybe we shouldn't be doing it. Maybe we shouldn't be contributing. And uh, the, the impulse is to be our impulse should be to do good. Uh, satire is to is ultimately about doing good. It's not about doing evil. It's about poking fun at the people who are misusing power. It's not poking fun at the powerful. It's poking fun at the misuse of power. Richard Sharp, I think, was certainly deserving of some satire. Boris is definitely deserving of some satire. And there's plenty of opportunity there in both figures without resorting to racial stereotyping and 
anti-Semitic abuse. And if it happens by accident, it still happens. And one, you know, we can apologize and apologize. But I would say, Catherine Vina, why didn't she see it? 